chair if you have to. Put your eyes on me. I'm going to be moving around a little bit. But I want to make sure I have your undivided attention. Good. Do me a favor. I want to start off. I want you to look at the learning goals. I want you to take like the next like 30 seconds or so. If you don't get it all read, that's okay. So I'm going to ask you to do something afterwards. But I want you to take like 30 seconds and just kind of quietly to yourself read those. Our three learning goals, please. Listen, when I say go, I'd like you at your table to make sure that everyone sitting at your table understands the three learning goals. We've talked about them already a couple of times, but I want you to make an extra effort here. I asked my uh, second hour this. I said, do it through this lens. Imagine I was giving you a quiz at the end of the hour. I was going to select one person at your table to answer an impromptu question about the learning goals. And that person's response was going to stand for all of your grades at your table. So look at it through that lens. When I say go, when you hear the music, take like 30 seconds, make sure everybody at your table is on the exact same page with their understanding of the Lord and go. Ready? Go. Um, completed by a professional photographer. 
So tomorrow in the lab, after you finish your found name assignment, I'm going to put a couple of links on my blog, and you're going to be able to start um, looking at different photographs created by famous photographers. I'm kind of strict about the famous photographer because most of them have strong compositions. We talk about that all the time in here, and that's what we want to mimic. And ultimately, you're going to be imitating that composition. You can get creative with it by doing some sort of interesting spin on it or an interesting take on it, and I'll come back to that in a minute. But what you're going to have to find in the lab is somebody else's photograph that you are then going to imitate. So it almost becomes kind of a satire. In other words, you could kind of play around with it and make it a little bit interesting, and if you can make fun of the photograph a little bit if you want. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. But the arrangement of the composition is your learning goal. That's what you'll be exploring. I know this is difficult to read, so if you have to glance back there occasionally, you may want to do that. In fact, I'm going to ask everybody to glance back there right now. I'm not going to talk behind you. We'll look together. That will be the best. Because you're going to be able to read a little bit more. I'm going to come back to our agenda specifically today. But what I want you to look at are a few photographs. I think this was taken by Victoria Welk a couple of years ago. Um, this is, this is um, I can't remember who the original photographer is, although it's written there. Um, it looks like Thomas in the name. But anyways, I think the photograph on the left is her imitation of the professional photographer's photograph, which is on the right. I'm going to show you a couple of examples. I can't remember whose photograph that was. I should have written it all down. This one was probably one of the first really, really good ones that I got. And if anybody remembers that, Shelby Summer, she graduated last year. So the guy on the right is, I think it's an Andy Livowitz photograph, and the guy on the right is Woody Allen. So he's sitting on his bed, he's got a pad of paper and the pen and stuff like that. Now look at the arrangement. This is where the details of the composition become really, really important. If you look at the position of their hands, it's identical. The position of the paper is almost identical. The perspective. In other words, where the camera's pointing is identical. Their head is cut off in exactly the same place. Where this gets playful is that the photograph on the right is of a famous, he's a film director, he makes films. He, he actually pumps out a film every single year. But where this gets playful is that you've got this old guy on the right in this position like he's getting ready to write. And you've got Shelby, this young girl, putting on these big glasses and kind of almost being representative of him. So that's where it gets almost satirical. It gets kind of comedic in nature. It's almost like she's kind of playing with the photograph, um, poking fun at it a little bit. But the arrangement itself is almost identical. Here's what I want you to tune into. Look at the shapes and the lines and the lights and the darks and the placement of the objects. That's what Shelby was really good at imitating. If I jump back to Victoria Wells, Hers is a little bit more difficult to control because she picked a tree branch. So that's a really hard thing for her to arrange. Where Shelby, because she was sitting there with like a pad of paper and a pen and a, and a pair of glasses, she could, she could manipulate her environment. Where if, she's, if she was taking a picture of a tree branch like Vicky was, it wouldn't have been quite so easy. Here's another one. Famous photographs on the left, Diane Beats recreated it on the right. Here's another one that is close, but it's a little the composition itself is a little bit different. This was created by Audrey Fox. The one on the left is the original. It's a, it's a photograph of Marilyn Monroe sitting on the couch reading. And Audrey, I think that's Audrey's mom. Um, and she actually, you can see it, she took try to do get the exact same perspective. I think the foot on the one on the right is a little bit bigger than Marilyn Monroe's foot on the left. But generally speaking, I mean, she, she nailed down a lot of composition. If I was going to be very, very critical, I would say this. The knee should have gone almost off the page. If you look at the, the knee on the back side, it actually should have gone up 
to the very top of the composition and, and then therefore out of the frame a little bit. In this assignment, it's going to be really, really important that you pay attention to all of the details, all of the lines and the shapes. Everybody turn to look right at me now for a minute. You have to remember, you know, we did a perspective assignment, and so you know, if I took a picture of Hunter right here, and then I take a picture of Hunter right here, I've just changed the perspective. So when you're recreating a photograph, you're going to have to be really careful that you're actually creating the exact same composition. Because that's what I was looking for. I feel like this if you're with me so far. Check with the person sitting next to you. See if they have any questions. They do. Raise your hand. Show it. Today. All right, turn to read with me. Today, here's what your agenda is. And again, if you don't finish this today, that's okay. This will go into tomorrow or Thursday as well. But here's what I'd like you to do. I want you to find three photographs in magazines. How many? Three. Three photographs in, ma in magazines. You have to make them easy enough to imitate. Because you're going to practice imitating them. You're going to get with a partner or a group. I would say don't let your group go over three, four people max. I prefer not to have a group of six, unless there's six people in one of the photographs that you're trying to imitate and you talk to me about it first. I've had some students do that. And then the third thing I want you to do is to practice imitating those photographs. I want you to think about the perspective, the placement of the subject. Turn your head and look right at me. If someone in the photograph's arm is like this, and you make it like this, that's a big difference in the composition overall. Ansel Adams, the guy who went out and took all those landscapes and the beautiful mountain photographs and waterfalls and all that, he said something that people have been repeating in the world of photography for years. He said, Photo photo photographers don't take photographs, they make them. I like that because he puts the pressure on us to control what it is that we're doing. Instead of just going, click. I mean, we talk about how we get lucky on things all the time, the serendipitous moments, and that's great. But it's much better if we create it ourselves. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please, 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 go like this. So I can say it You don't have one, raise your hand. I'm coming to deliver this sheet of paper. Please go like this. That you have it. Do me a favor, make sure that you've got your name on it right now. Please. After you do that, uh, glance to the person to your left or right, make sure he or she put his or her name on it as well. Once you've done that, put your eyes on me for a couple of minutes and uh, we'll move on. Listen, glance at the photos, they're exactly the same as yesterday. One, you're going to continue experimenting with the different um, types of graphite, the H's and D's that we were talking about yesterday. And two, you're going to practice drawing from observation. That means drawing your hand in this case. I want to play a video for you. While you watch the video, I'd like you to answer two questions. Really easy. Try it on Thank you. Two questions. One. What is or what might be the most useful thing that you see in the video for you practicing sketching? What's the most useful thing that you see in the video? And two, what questions might you still have? Check with the person sitting next to you. Make sure they know what two questions are that they're going to answer when we start watching the video. You hear someone ask a question, raise your hand like this for them. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Bailey. Bailey? Here's 
show you. Here's the reality of it. Um, you were in for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Yesterday, in every class, this one, my second hour, my fourth hour, I have run around giving about um, 10 mini demonstrations. And then I almost didn't work out last time. I tried to sketch something the students didn't see. It was kind of confusing. So I did it differently last night. I sketched myself. So you're going to hear my dull voice. Bear with me. It's not very long. It's a handful of minutes. But really what I want you to do is to watch the video. Pay attention to things like this. When I say the word anchor, I want you to be able to like, talk about that with me. Because that becomes really important. I'll say it several times intentionally. And then um, anything else that you pull from the video, that's really what I want down on that. That's going to be your TikTok class today as well. Okay, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, so look up here, or at one of the screens. I'm going to cut off the lights because it's easier to see. The last thing is this. This gives me an opportunity to go like this as well. I hope right here. Look, that's my blog. And I'm going to start posting these videos on my blog. So if you want, you know that our agenda every day is on there. Every learning goal, every activity, um, every assignment that I give goes on my blog. In addition to that, I'm going to start putting videos on here too. I already have it up from last hour, so I don't really have to click on the link. But I just want to kind of throw that out there so that you knew. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Olson. I uh, want to give you a brief demonstration of drawing your hand from observation, which of course is our learning goal right now. This is my hand. Okay. And here's my pencil. I have my drawing pencil and my eraser and so on. So, as we talked about a little bit yesterday, you want to get your hand in a really comfortable position. So mine right now, you know, I'm just, I'm leaving it like this because um, this would be one of four that I could choose from and it's comfortable enough to leave for about 10 minutes or 15 minutes, which is about the length of time that I would spend on my hand. I'm not going to draw the entire thing right now, but I just kind of want to give you an idea. So I kind of leave it like this and I want to talk to you about the way I look at things, which is how I'm hoping that you'll start to look at things. Um, I think one of the biggest mistakes we make when we draw from observation is that we let our mind interfere. Our mind tells us what we think a hand should look like rather than just drawing what it is that we see. So remember, what you want to do is to draw what you see. I usually have an anchor, so my thumb right here would be the anchor in my drawing. So the way I would start is, as I've explained before, really light